Everyone looks for ways to pass the time while driving a car or during periods of relaxation. Music, books, video games, movies, and more become easy ways to be entertained. Typically, decisions about what music to listen to or what television series to watch are not long thought out decisions. They are decisions based merely on what is pleasing and enjoyable. But these decisions may have a subtle yet profound impact in the wrong direction. Music is a universal treasure. Every culture loves, listens to, and makes music. But what kind of music is made? Modern secular music often extols and glorifies behavior the Christian should have no part in. Many songs glorify violence. Profane and foul language litters many tunes. And of course, a vast amount of music lifts up and praises immoral lifestyles and behavior. It's easy to claim, but it's just a song, or I just like the melody. But how often can the Christian listen to songs that don't just downplay fornication and immorality, but praise it without being affected by that message? The same goes for books, video games, and movies. All these things, the things that people consume through their eyes and ears, have an impact on the heart. Jesus said, For out of the heart come evil thoughts, murder, adultery, sexual immorality, theft, false witness, and slander. How often can a man or woman watch illicit behavior yet maintain a vigilant guard on their thoughts? What a person consumes begins to shape who they are. If Christians are entertained by consuming evil things, how long before their heart is changed and they begin thinking and acting more like the world than like Christ? Some doors of entertainment need to be left closed. Lastly, what about words and speech? People often speak without thinking. After all, how harmful could words be? The world may find words to be innocuous, but Scripture repeatedly warns God's people to guard their language. Jesus promised that everyone will give account of their words on the day of judgment in Matthew 12, verse 36. The Apostle Paul condemns corrupting talk, foolish talk, and crude joking in Ephesians. James provides a lengthy warning about the Christian speech and the danger our words possess. The world may walk flippantly through the doors of speech, but the Christian should take heed of their words and only choose doors of speech that speak truth, build others up, and praise God. What doors will you walk through today? Choose them carefully. The doors you walk through determine the paths you walk. Make sure you walk the pathways of God, not the roads of the world. I'm about to read to you a very crucial passage of Scripture that's in the Bible. And as I read these verses, I want you to take special note of what the Bible says about your heart your mouth, your eyes and feet. Proverbs chapter 4, verse 23 to 27 says, Keep your heart with all diligence, for out of it spring the issues of life. Put away from you a deceitful mouth and put perverse lips far from you. Let your eyes look straight ahead and your eyelids look right before you. Ponder the path of your feet and let all your ways be established. Do not turn to the right or the left. Remove your foot from evil. It's a key thing to note that this passage of Scripture begins and starts by talking about the heart. Think about your physical heart. If you have a bad heart, then the rest of your body's in jeopardy. If the heart quits working, then everything else quits working. You can't have a dead heart and a healthy ear. Same is true with our spiritual heart. If the heart is good, then what flows out is good. However, if the heart is bad, what flows out of our heart will be bad. Guarding your heart can be challenging because the heart is attacked from so many different angles. This world and its pleasures are after your heart. Satan is after your heart and our own sinful flesh wants to attack and fill our hearts with sin. And when we're having a hard day or going through tough times, it can be easy for our hearts to drift away. The next area we need to be careful of is our mouths. We are to put away our perverse speech. Our mouth actually reveals what's going on in our hearts. If there's evil in our hearts. If there's sin, our mouths will reflect that. The words and actions that flow from our mouths reveal where our heart is actually at. We may look spiritual from the outside, however, our words will reveal our spirituality. And now to the eyes. 
We're to keep our spiritual eyes directly forward. Think about your physical eyes. If you're driving and you don't keep your eyes directly forward, you're going to get in some real trouble. Some of the worst crashes are because our eyes are focused on something else, such as a phone or somebody in the back seat. And our spiritual eyes can do the same thing. When we turn our eyes away from the Lord, we're prone to stumble. And the final area mentioned in this passage of Scripture is all to do with your feet. When we focus on keeping our feet on the path, we move in the right direction. If you're going for a walk on a trail and you decide to get off the trail, you're much more likely to get lost. However, if you focus on keeping your feet on the trail, your path is laid out. Yet again, The same is true spiritually. If you follow the moral path God's laid for you, you will not stumble. However, as you seek your own path, it becomes so much easier to stumble. I encourage you to pray that your heart would not be drawn to sin. Pray that your mouth would not be filled with perverse words. Pray for your eyes to remain focused on God and for your feet to be led by the lamp that is the Word of God. Perspective. What is your perspective as a believer in Christ? I ask this question because at some point in your walk with the Lord, as you know Him more and more, you have to shift your perspective from God, take me here, take me over there, to Lord, I thank you for how far you've brought me. I thank you because I am no longer where I used to be. Perspective. Yes, every now and again, all of us ought to take a moment and remember. Remember all that God has done, because it's easy to forget what God has done for us, especially when we face challenging times or become preoccupied with our daily routines. But do you know why it's important to look back? It's important because you will begin to see how faithful God has been time after time. You'll begin to see how God has watched over you and opened doors for you time after time. When we reflect on the significant events and moments in our lives, we can recognize how God has been with us every step of the way. This is emphasized in Psalm 77 verses 11 through 12, where the Bible reads, I will remember the deeds of the Lord. Yes. I will remember your miracles of long ago. I will consider all your works and meditate on all your mighty deeds. This verse reminds us that God's works in the past are worthy of our reflection and meditation. By focusing on God's faithfulness in the past, we can gain confidence in His promises for the future. As the Apostle Paul wrote in Romans 8.28, And we know for those that love God, all things work together for good, for those who are called according to His purpose. Secondly, remembering the past helps us be grateful for what we have. When we look back and see how God has provided for us, protected us, and guided us, we can develop a heart of gratitude. And God certainly loves a thankful heart. When we are filled with thanksgiving and gratitude, this helps us to focus on God's blessings rather than our difficulties. Philippians 4 verse 6 says, Do not be anxious about anything, but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. Note how Paul said, with thanksgiving, meaning it's an essential component if we want our requests to be heard by God. By being thankful, we develop a deeper relationship with God, recognizing Him as the source of our blessings. A Puritan preacher by the name of Thomas Watson once said, Remembering the mercies of God breeds gratitude in our hearts. In addition to this, remembering the past helps us to share our testimony with others. Our personal testimonies are powerful tools for evangelism and can inspire others to seek God. As we reflect on what God has done in our lives, we can share our experiences with others, 
showing them how God has transformed us and guided us. In conclusion, I'd like to quote the words of a Christian theologian by the name of J.I. Packer, who said, The past is a source of knowledge, and the future is a source of hope. Love of the past implies faith in the future. Isaiah 45, 22-23 says, Look to me and be saved, all you ends of the earth, for I am God, and there is no other. I have sworn by myself, the word has gone out of my mouth in righteousness and shall not return. That to me every knee shall bow, every tongue shall take an oath. In those moments where we are still before God, we need to realize just how mighty God is, just how powerful God is. The Bible tells us there is no one and nothing that can be compared to God. We need to remember this. Nothing and no one is worthy to be competing for the number one spot of your heart. God should be first. Out of all the people we will ever come across in life, there is only one who will never disappoint us. There is only one who can satisfy our soul's deepest needs. There is only one who has ever uttered the words, I will never leave you nor forsake you, and was able to keep the promise. His name is Jesus Christ. There is none like him. There is none who can rival him. There is none on earth or any person who has ever lived who can come close to Jesus Christ. He loves with an unconditional love. He speaks with unmatchable wisdom. He is the Good Shepherd, and His presence, it casts out all fear. All unclean things and anxiety have to leave. His presence heals. It renews and it restores. At the sound of His name, demons tremble. On this earth, miracles happen healing the sick, restoring sight to the blind, unstopping deaf ears. All those are a part of his resume. He is the way, the truth, and the life. And so, dear friend, when you open your heart and embrace all that Jesus Christ has to offer, this will impact your life. This decision is the one that will radically transform your life. If you really surrender, and embrace the Lord. Not only does he bring eternal life, but in this present day here on this earth, if you truly surrender to Jesus Christ, he's able to bring you joy. And how many of us could do with a little more joy in our lives? Psalm 16 verse 11 says, You make known to me the path of life. In your presence there is fullness of joy. At your right hand are pleasures forevermore. When Jesus Christ comes into your heart, he brings joy. And you will discover that joy is ever present in your darkest hour. Joy is ever present in the midst of chaos. And that is simply because Jesus Christ is the source of joy. So, I ask you, dear friends... Have you invited the Lord into your heart? Have you embraced him? Have you met the one who can offer amazing grace? Have you met the one who can heal your deepest scars? Have you met the one who raised Lazarus from the dead? If you haven't met him, you can. You can accept him in your life today, and he will come into your heart. He is the one who can renew, he can restore, he can rejuvenate. Jesus Christ, the Son of God, he is waiting for you to seek him. When the Bible says, be still and know that I am God, it's really telling you to stop everything you're doing. Stop worrying, stop fighting. 
Stop resisting and start yielding to God. Start listening to God. There is something about stillness. And I believe that this verse is calling us to be still before the Lord because we need to direct all of our attention, all of our focus on the Lord. You see, when you spend time getting to know the Lord, when you spend time in the presence of Jesus Christ, you will truly be transformed. And I encourage you to desire and hunger for these types of rich encounters in the presence of God. Because it's only in those one-to-one -one intimate encounters that each of us can get a personal revelation of who God truly is. It's only in those one-to-one -one intimate encounters that each of us can be empowered and filled with courage. The courage to face the world and stand up for Christ. The courage to stand up to the devil and declare that Jesus Christ is Lord. The prophet Isaiah received a revelation that should inspire all of us to recognize God for who he truly is. Listen carefully to what Isaiah 45 verse 2 to 7 says. I will go before you and make the crooked places straight. I will break in pieces the gates of bronze and cut the bars of iron. I will give you the treasures of darkness and hidden riches of secret places, that you may know that I, the Lord, who call you by your name, am the God of Israel, for Jacob my servant's sake, and Israel my elect. I have even called you by your name. I have named you, though you have not known me. I am the Lord, and there is no other. There is no God besides me. I will gird you, though you have not known me, that they may know from the rising of the sun to its setting that there is none besides me. I am the Lord, and there is no other. I form the light and create darkness. I make peace and create calamity. I, the Lord, do all these things. This is a wonderful revelation of just who God is. God is firmly in control. God is all-knowing. God is almighty. Welcome to the prayer for forgiveness, renewal, and repentance. This is simply a video I've put together where I like to pray for anyone within the sound of my voice. All I ask you to do is to agree with me as we seek our Heavenly Father together. Please continue to meditate on this prayer for yourself. Speak it daily or listen to this video over and over again. And allow the Word of God concerning forgiveness, renewal, and repentance of sins to reach deep into your spirit. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we gather together here online and come into agreement in the wonderful and powerful name of Jesus. Where two or more are gathered, there you shall surely be. And anything we agree upon is touching, you will surely do. The Bible says that if there's any unforgiveness, that it should be dealt with before praying. Therefore, we release any anger, bad feelings, resentment, or any other wrong attitude before you now. We lay it at your feet and we release and forgive those who have wronged us. I lift up those watching this video and we come into agreement and lift up forgiveness, renewal, and repentance. Father, your word says that if we ask for mercy and for forgiveness, you will forgive us and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Purely on the basis of the promises of forgiveness in your word, with all feeling aside, we believe that the listener is forgiven. Humbly they come before your throne to receive this grace and mercy. Help the listener to forgive themselves and let the past go. We declare in agreement that Jesus is Lord over the listener, and if they believe in their heart that you raised him from the dead, they will be saved with heaven being their eternal home. We receive it and we praise you, Father. Help the listener's unbelief. Their slate is wiped clean right now. In the face of any feeling of guilt and unworthiness, the listener receives their forgiveness from you. The guilt is for leaving and the sin is removed because of your love for them. You have forgiven their sins completely. They are blessed. God in heaven, you have forgiven them because of what Jesus has done. 
It is not about what they do or don't do. It is by grace through faith that they have forgiveness. They cannot earn it, but you have freely given forgiveness to them because they asked. Praise the Lord. Renew them right now by your spirit in Jesus name. We speak refreshing over their mind, will, emotions, and body right now in Jesus' name. You, Father, are holding nothing against them. You, Father, are not holding anything back from them. You chose the listener in Christ before the foundation of the world that they should be holy and blameless in your sight. Thanks be to you. In Jesus, they have redemption, deliverance, and salvation through his blood, the remission, forgiveness of their offenses, shortcomings, and trespasses in accordance with the riches and the generosity of your gracious favor. Father, the listener has received your son, Jesus. They believe in his name. Through Jesus, you have given them the right to become your child. Thank you for forgiving them entirely and absolving them from all guilt. They are more than conquerors through the blood of Jesus. They are set free from the past in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Welcome to the Prayer for Salvation. This is simply a video I've put together where I'd like to pray for anyone within the sound of my voice. All I ask you to do is to agree with me as we seek our Father God. Choosing to receive Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior is the most important decision you will ever make. Remember, it's not about how you feel after you pray. When the Bible says it, that settles it, and God promises to save you when you ask. God's word promises, if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus and shalt believe in thine heart that God has raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. For with the heart man believes unto righteousness and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. By his grace, God has already done everything to provide salvation for you, regardless of your past. Your part is to simply believe and receive. So the very moment you commit your life to Jesus Christ, the truth of his word instantly comes to pass in your spirit. And when you're born again, there's a brand new you. Pray out loud after me. Jesus, I confess that you are my Lord and Savior. I believe in my heart that God raised him from the dead. By faith in your word, I receive salvation now. Thank you for saving me. I am now reborn. I am a Christian, a child of Almighty God. I am saved. Thank you, Jesus.